Hello, hello, I'm Will, and this is Origami Cybertruck. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a recent interview on Autoline After Hours with Sandy Monroe. Now, in case you haven't seen this video, it's really interesting, and I put a link in the show notes uh, down below. But Sandy Monroe is an industry expert uh, who basically makes his living tearing down uh, vehicles and letting other auto manufacturers know how they can improve on their own vehicles, how they can kind of integrate new technologies and new uh, ideas from other manufacturers, and how they can reduce cost, uh, most importantly. So uh, he recently did an interview basically all about the Cybertruck and how much cost savings Tesla may be able to achieve with this versus a standard kind of uh, F-150 style pickup truck. So there's a lot of detail in his video. It's a very long video, so I thought I'd summarize a little bit, and then I also want to talk a little bit about the implications of what this all means potentially for Tesla, the Cybertruck, and other models going forward. All right, so first of all, there's going to be a lot of numbers here, but let's dig in. Uh, Sandy kind of talks about if he gives two scenarios in the in the video. And one of the scenarios is if they were producing Cybertrucks at about a run rate of 50,000 units per year and one at about 600,000 units a year. And he compares what he thinks the CapEx cost for the body of the Cybertruck would be compared to a conventional pickup truck. At 50,000 units a year, the Cybertruck in his estimation would cost about uh, 30 million in CapEx to, to do the body. So that includes uh, laser or water jet cutting, um, bending brakes, no paint shop because it's stainless steel, it doesn't need paint, robotic TIG welding with manual tack welding in, in advance of that. And overall, he says that would probably cost about $30 million. Now CapEx is spread out in a lot of different ways, but that's just for the tooling cost to build the body of this truck. Let's compare that to what would be something like an F-150 pickup. Um, he said there would be about $25 million for presses and dies, $35 million for the body shop, and then here's the big one, about $150 million for a paint shop. So you're going to end up with about $210 million just to produce the body at a run rate of about $50,000 a year. So that's a savings of $180 million, or about 85.7% of the cost of the CapEx for making a Cybertruck as compared to a standard truck. Now at a higher volume, this is more typical of what uh, pickup trucks in the US, the big three kind of sell for in this range, about 600,000 units per year. Um, we'd be looking at something closer to about $125 million for the Cybertruck body CapEx. At that same rate of about 600,000 vehicles per you're looking at a cap rate for a traditional pickup truck of about $615 million. So compared with the Cybertruck, it's an overall savings of about $490 million or almost 80%. So let's talk a little bit about speculation of what this means for the future. I think the first and most important thing is that you know, the paint shop is huge because that's a huge expense in terms of just basic cost. It's very expensive to build a paint shop. But beyond that, a lot of the equipment for a standard vehicle is specialty and customized. It costs a ton of money and more importantly, it takes a very long time to produce all of the dies that kind of press the metal together and form it into these kind of curved body panel shapes. The Cybertruck with its flat, angular kind of dimensions doesn't require any of that. It just requires kind of cutting out the, the, the thing and then bending it into shape and then welding it together. So what that means in a practical sense is that you could seriously, and not saying that it's this easy, it's not trivial to design a vehicle, but you really could basically in CAD, draw a new design for a new body on Monday, and by Friday, 
you could be cutting these things out using a laser or a water jet cutter in a factory. You could be bending them that day. You could be welding them together and you could be, you know, pumping out new prototypes or even, you know, conceivably new, new vehicles extremely quickly of completely new designs. So, you know, after the Cybertruck reveal, someone asked Elon on Twitter, I think, hey, would you consider making a smaller version of the Cybertruck? Because this won't fit my use case, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe they're in a country that isn't the U.S. or Canada and doesn't have enormous roads. You know, maybe someone in the European market or, or Asian market or something like that. And he said, yeah, sure, we could probably look at doing that. Um, and one of the reasons that they could do that is because they it would be very easy to just create a new body shell design this sort of exoskeleton that is the frame and it is the uh, structure of the vehicle and it'd be relatively easy to make something new and of a different size and then you just integrate the pack the whole battery skateboard uh, powertrain just kind of mates up to that underneath and you could have a very modular platform and very quick to produce and design this allows a lot of flexibility for Tesla because normally if you're getting into you know creating a, a whole new vehicle it's extremely expensive because you have these very large uh, capital expenditure capex costs uh, that you have to sink in and if the vehicle you know doesn't sell all that well or you know maybe it's like more of a limited kind of volume thing then it, it makes it a very risky um, a very risky strategy to create all of that tooling, all that paint shop, all that stuff for a vehicle that maybe doesn't have a huge market. Now, I think the Cybertruck has a huge market. So let me be clear about that. He estimated, uh, Sandy estimated, you know, 50,000 um, as an initial run rate. I think it's going to be a lot higher than that. But, you know, imagine that there's some sort of specialty vehicle that maybe wouldn't be economical to design and produce if you had to invest all that money up front. Uh, well, Tesla is a little bit free to not have to worry about that constraint anymore because the equipment isn't really specialized for any particular model. It's very kind of generic equipment that's also very cheap. So that's one really kind of interesting possibility in the future. Uh, another interesting possibility that I see coming up with this is all these design centers that Tesla has announced, you know, they announced that they're going to have a design center at the new Gigafactory 3 uh, facility in China. They're going to have a design center at the German uh, facility near um, Berlin. So what are they going to do with all these design facilities? Well, you know, they could be making lots of different kinds of models that are more specialized and more localized eventually at some point, you know, that are that are more tailored to the unique market requirements and conditions of an, a region or an area or even a country potentially in the future. And the whole architecture of the exoskeleton that the Cybertruck is based on, this stainless steel uh, exoskeleton, will really allow them to have a lot of creative freedom and at a very cheap cost. So I think this is really exciting and I, I personally think that the Cybertruck that we saw revealed in November of 2019 is really only going to be the first of potentially many different cyber style vehicles that get offered. Uh, so anyway, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. Again, check out that video. It's a pretty long one, but definitely worth a watch. And uh, really appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe and share it with your friends. All right. Until next time, Cybertruck out.